So we are going to open the uh, uh, second public hearing uh, for, uh, well, the Town of Littleton Board of Selectmen proposes to enter into a lease to purchase option agreement between Ronald P. Morrow, 2014 Revocable Living Trust, with a mailing address of 840 Off Road, Littleton, New Hampshire. The property is situated in Grafton County, Littleton, New Hampshire, located on River, River Glen Lane, tax map 84, lot 11. According to RSA 41, colon 14A, a process authorized by Article 4 on March 2016 town meeting, the proposed sale purchase requires a review of the planning board and the conservation commission followed by two public hearings. The first public hearing was held on Monday, April 22nd, 2019. Uh, the May 6th public hearing, Today shall be the second of the two required. The Board of Selectmen will vote on the uh, vote at the Board of Selectmen's meeting scheduled for Monday, May 20th, 2019, at 120 Main Street Community Center, held room. So we are opening the second public hearing on this. Um, making any comments anybody has? Uh, yes, uh, my name is Roger Merrill. And I would wonder if uh, Mr. Grosset would read the uh, letter that he received from uh, Chair of the Board of Conservation, Mr. Jamal. It was sent on March 25th. Do you want read it? I think we had that for the last meeting. But let's see if I have that. I, 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 I just I wasn't here for last meeting. No. That's the final. Okay. That last meeting was the final. It's not like a final year, I didn't bring my paperwork from the last meeting. Okay. I just wish you would just read it for the public and know what it says. Yeah, I'll check my. Uh, is this a is this guy? What's he have right there? No. It isn't? No. I have a letter here. Okay, fine. I got it. Oh, yeah, you got it. You got it right there. I think it's the packet from last time. Yeah. It's not like we don't have time. Yeah. So um, just to give you an update too on 
uh, some of the things that come on this. So this is a lease uh, with an option. Right. Uh, so it's a it's a three year uh, in order to do any kind of um, further activity. It probably would take the, about a three year period to actually trans actually transfer the property. Right. Um, and right now September. Um, the next activity there is going to be the uh, plan NH design charette. So we applied for a, a plan NH design charette, similar to the one that was done in 2012. And the plan NH board um, considered the application, I think it was maybe two months ago, and they unanimously uh, voted to approve our application. So I think it's about you know maybe twenty six thousand dollars worth of uh, planning services where they bring in architects, engineers, community planners, and they get community input on what the community would like to see uh, for the River District area. And really, the charrette I think last time was for the um, the north side of the river. And since the River District Commission has made a lot of a lot of progress in carrying out what was actually called for in the charrette. Um, the group wanted to get the community's input for the next phase. What do they want to see on the south side? And it's not just this parcel, but it will be, this will be a major uh, point. And it would be uh, the south side all the way to the former Kitchener property, which is now the Chapman property, and uh, just what the public wants to see. So um, I think that um, that kind of information would be useful too for the design charrette um, when that comes out. So you might want to mark your calendar and, come out for participation. Is that uh, so that's going to be uh, on September 13th and 14th. And there are two pretty much full day events. Uh, some of the time is for general public input, and then some is for the professionals to take all the input they've got from the public and then um, uh, act on it. I think, won't be part of the first one, Chad? Yeah, it's some extent. Yeah, so you probably know how. I'm, I'm excited to see the process work, but you've actually experienced it, so I don't know if you have any more information. No, the, the, uh, I was uh, just part of the public input, but it was a good round table. Everybody just giving ideas and people taking things down, and then when you look at the finished product that came up, it was, it was really great. So they did a fantastic job. It's, it's pretty neat to see because they it, it took everybody's ideas and they put them on paper, and then now we're actually seeing um, what they planned to happen. So, It's just, as I say, we were appointed by the select people. Um, it's us to look out for the conservation land of the town, and we were very much against this whole thing going through. And I just want to make a voice that the uh, town is going to spend four hundred one thousand. We don't have the price. We don't have the lease, yeah. we don't have the lease price. No, the, the lease price is actually going to be equivalent to the amount of taxes that the lot currently pays. And so, um, but the, the intent the is... Assessed, the assessed value of the lot right now is $90,000? Uh, $2,500 annually is what the um, tax the lease is. is. Yeah, so the lease is just to really to equal to the taxes. And it, and it gives the town control to be able to use it for uh, farmers, continued use for farmers market, parking, and uh, potentially community events. Kind of like, I think you've seen the, the um, pumpkin fest takes place out there, mm -hmm. and the uh, uh, other entities like Shillings has used it for the October fest. So it would be a, uh, the town would have access to it for those kind of things. Can you said in could you read my letter or you uh, the planning board? Yeah. He's got it right. Oh, you have, have it? You have it right there? Or no, Jen, I, I have it right here. Hi there, Val. Hi. <laughs> it's an email I sent to you with it. <clears throat>
planning board. I can, I can read it. Uh, April 5th, 2019, on April 2nd, 2019, uh, town manager Andrew Dorsett presented a lease to purchase agreement for tax map 84 lot 11. The planning board voted unanimously to support this property being green space during a three year lease period. Sincerely, Anthony J. Alacla, planning board, vice chair. Yes, good morning. So, uh, what, maybe I just should just explain what I'm doing. Um, this is Dory Hamilton, and I'm Ron Evanway. We both represent the farmer's market right now. And we're, you know, we have concerns about the property that it will allow us to go through the season somewhat interrupted with a short time to use it. And so we are concerned. That's our concern. And I think I wrote you a letter to that respect. Um, it could be a reassured of some sort, to some extent. Yeah, the farmer's market is specifically addressed in the easement document, saying that it, it continues, yeah. It's addressed as how? Uh, farmer's market. I can read it, I can read it to you. Yeah. Um, whereas, and now therefore, uh, lease, um, where well, was it? During the term of this option agreement, tenants shall be permitted to utilize the property for public parking and not-for-profit community events, ex excepting the farmer's market. Meaning, the farmer's market is not a not-for-profit community event. So in all aspects, we can kind of the, the, intent is, the intent is that the farmer's market can continue. At least for this season. Yeah. At the last meeting, I think I brought up the issue of how that that language and I don't I think that language can be should be cleaned up yeah. because it's it sounds strange it's, yeah the way it's said it can be interpreted it can be interpreted that when you say accept the farmers market do you mean it can be used by everyone except them or every nonprofit except them because they're not a nonprofit it's just mm. and I think we, we had talked about uh, asking the attorney to clear that language up the intent is to continue to allow the farmers market to, to utilize the space. And just one more thing: our markets we begin. Uh, we, we're really usually around nine o'clock. We start setting up, and then by two o'clock we're out of there usually. That's our Sunday time. That's the only time. And um, we last year we started using the gravel section down near the parking area. And that was working out well for us. And uh, we had cones set up and so on to guide people in. It made sense. Um, instead of having all that traffic congested, it was becoming a mm -hmm. kind of a major thing. But anyway, well, we've worked it out ourselves, and we're pretty self-sufficient on our handling what we do down there, you know, maintenance-wise and, and everything else. So um, we just kind of want to be reassured. I'd like to be vocal about this. You have anything to go on? Just, just to tout our existence, we were voted the best farmers market in the North Country by the recent survey. We have 45 vendors and a, long, a, a considerable waiting list. Uh, and we're starting our 22nd year, so I think it's a real asset to the town that we continue to be present. The market is growing in kind of like barrel to the town. It's getting that favorable response throughout the state and other areas. We're, we're growing in a, in a positive way. That's all I have. Well, my understanding is that this whole, none of this is intended to infringe on the farmers not to use of this property. Not absolutely not. And I think that the river district and all the entities involved with this kind of like a centerpiece of that parcel yeah. has been involved. A recent USDA application specifically dealt with um, with this parcel and supporting the farmers market. Uh, I think in the budget, in the grant application budget, it included um, I think it was around five thousand dollars specifically for uh, support of the farmers market through marketing campaign and some other activities. I can't remember the exact pieces, mm -hmm. but it was really in support of the farmers market. So. Okay. I'm going to, uh, th this public hearing is open for another 15 minutes before it closes, but we are going to overlap them. Uh, we have a second public hearing for this evening, this afternoon. Um, 
So uh, we are holding, we are opening the second public hearing in the town of Littleton. Board of Selectmen proposes to enter into a license agreement with public service company New Hampshire doing business as Eversource Energy and New Hampshire Corporation with a principal place of business at 780 North Commercial Street, Manchester, New Hampshire. Licensee may use said license for access, ingress, and egress to and from Mount Eustis Road and a 150 foot wide existing easement. The property is located in Grafton County in the town of Littleton, tax map 99, lot 17. According to RSA 41, colon 14A, the process, author, a process authorized by Article 4 at the March 2016 town meeting, the proposed sale purchase requires the review of the Planning Board and the Conservation Commission, followed by two public hearings. The Board of Selectmen will vote at the Board of Selectmen meeting scheduled for Monday, May 20th, 2019, at 120 Main Street Community Center held. So we're opening the second public hearing on the uh, uh, lease to our source. Anybody have any comments on that? Or the first one? Did you go over any details of, kind of where it's at? Yeah, yeah sure. We've got more to share with us. Yep. So uh, this is basically a access to the transmission line through the, the uh, transfer station lot um, in the industrial park. It's something that they already do. Um, this would be able to add another level of uh, coordination with them. For example, we can require that they get permission about where to park. I know there was a, an issue before where they parked the truck and blocked uh, some of our uh, recycling vendors from getting in the site properly. But uh, this, this basically also formalizes it for uh, the proposal is for a 10 year period. Um, and it's a license, which means it is revocable. And uh, Initially, it was uh, $3,500 for a permanent easement, but right now it's at $8,500 for a 10-year uh, license. And uh, we, we talked about this in the past. Uh, we determined whether that that change in detail affects this second public hearing. Um, I have a question how to legal, but I don't have an answer yet. But we'll know before. So we'll have to readdress yeah. it if it does. Yeah. Okay. It's a great deal for the town. In reality, all I have to do is a few bulldozers and get down over the bank, and they'll have access. They have right away. So if you've got a deal with them, you get some money for the town, have at it. I think it's great. Everybody take a nap. <laughs> Yeah, it feels the temperature's much better here. Well, it's just a cookie. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just trying to hydrate the avoid heat stroke. Mm -hmm. Was it just your office or was the whole, the whole thing at my office gets hot anyways because the way the sun hits it? Yeah. But um, uh, the whole office was really hot. Mine was at least five to ten hotter. Good for the little countries, anyway. Yeah. There's really not much uh, cross airflow either, is there? There's that one little hole right in the crosswinds mm -hmm. right union's mm -hmm. office. Mm -hmm. And you see all the windows in there, but it's still going. Yeah, severe allergies this time of year. So, you know, nothing was cracked, but still there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah.
уже можно
second public hearing still has another 15 minutes to go. In the meantime, we will uh, start the regular selectance meeting. And I guess we'll start that with the village meetings. So 
was an interesting thing. And Ace is kind of in the exploratory stage right now. Well, what would the net effect of something like that be? I mean, well, that's what they're looking at. Um, some of the some of the thoughts were that um, you know almost like a cross pollination thing. So if our if a community has a, an art that is. Um, regional base and it's probably a lot that's even outside of my understanding that they already do but like say upstage players might go on a tour you know up and down and then maybe somebody from a group from Hanover or a music group or you know something from that and that hot region you know, come up here mm -hmm. uh, but there's there's quite a bit that I'm sure you know they're they're in a world that you know, I'm not so there's probably a lot more implications but okay. you know and uh, there were there were both sides represented some reforms and more against it which is interesting um, we had a meeting uh, with the USDA and the Ukraine group. Um, we're, we're just, you know, we try to stay up and go over all the projects that we're doing with um, with the uh, Ukraine group. They do a lot of our uh, sewer and stormwater projects with us. Um, we've applied for multiple USDA grants. Uh, we're getting some feedback from USDA at the meeting um, for everything from our sub area two project to. Um, you know, our community facilities grants that we are submitting. We have, for example, out in Sandy right now, we have a, an application from the library to um, help them with their humidity control uh, by putting in um, uh, what they call heat pumps. And then we also have a grant application to the Opera House, which is to develop the Cottage Street level. Um, we also have an application out for the, um, the borough parcel to the Chapman parcel for the community to explore. What that would do is give us engineering and design monies to carry out what we're designed to put in the track. Um, and we also have a uh, wastewater treatment plant project uh, with USDA, which is the one that would help us develop our long-range capital plan to help preserve and grow our capacity at the, at the treatment plant. And I believe we have an active one for our uh, collection we're looking at our um, our lateral asset uh, product and mapping it with uh, the GIS technologies. Um, you know, I had a meeting with a, a taxpayer who was concerned about um, uh, being able to afford his taxes, and uh, the thing, the only reason I bring that up is because he was totally under, unaware of a state program that's out there to help uh, you know lower income residents stay in their home, and it, it, it starts with them filling out a DPA form, which uh, they can get online, um, but uh, I've also had a she, she printed out a big stack in, in the town office. A lot of people might not be aware of it, but the state does have an option to help with property taxes. Um, we met with the school, so we've been working with the school on an MOU for some time. Um, you know, it all started a couple of years ago um, when, when some of the less than formal agreements started to fall apart. And so we tried to work, and tried to work together to come to an agreement. I think we're like uh, plowing at the school. Uh, we looked at the numbers that they have for plowing and really it didn't make sense for us to do it. They have a good contract uh, at, a good, at a good price and uh, I think that, that they've decided that that's going to work for them. And uh, right now we're looking at you know, just our way, how we're going to collaborate with our uh, recreation. Um, you know, we, we, we keep the fields and everything at a certain level, but we have to keep them at a higher level. Um, to meet the needs of the, the different uh, sports events. So we're just trying to explore you know, how, that, how that works. And it looks like we're, gonna, we're, we're going to have an agreement in place here fairly soon. Um, and we all, while we were there, we also took a look at Lakeway. And I think you'll see more coming out of that. But we're just trying to explore you know, what's, what, are, what are the next steps? What does the school see as the next steps for you know, the current Lakeway, the new Lakeway, um, and uh, uh, the town, uh, the bar parcels, the eating parcels. So we just Explore some of that. Um, I did a CGI intro video shoot. This is basically a video that would introduce the, the community filming project that we're doing to um, the community and really to the businesses. And it's something that I guess they'll, they'll show the businesses to um, kind of get them wanting to be involved in uh, contracting with CGI. Um, we had a NRDC Riverfront project meeting. So um, one of the things that we're also applying for is the Northern Region Border uh, Grant. Um, and this would be to try to, again, help to uh, bring about whatever happens at the uh, design shred, but also to secure the property. We'll have that money to do that, um, you know, within a few years. So. Uh, that one's really dependent on us finishing our rail travel project in time. Unless we get 
co-acting as another big co-acting actually into our patients and so we'll see. Um, we had a, a master plan focus group, so the, the planning board working with resilience uh, has been holding um, focus groups on specific uh, areas of the master plan. And so uh, those have been going really, really good. Uh, they've had a lot of really good participation from people in the field. So this one was economic development. Uh, we had the land, people who own land and developers come in, Andy Smith uh, and a number of others for the economic development focus group. Uh, eventually there will be a, uh, a public uh, input session and the master plan is actually being public. The draft is being, uh, sections are being published online and public input is already open and welcome. Um, I've been, uh, you know, I, there's kind of a constant, I try to keep some time set aside constantly for working with franchise uh, recruitment, mainly for the Meadow Street development, and then also working to collaborate with the businesses uh, in the downtown river district. So uh, I have two really good ones. I probably shouldn't say the names until if we get a little further. I've also been working with uh, Chris Howie um, of the Howie Brothers. He wants the Brooks facility. We're trying to get, you know, get some action there. He has a plan and, um, you know, just trying to get him to explore some other ideas too. So, uh, had a good meeting with Boxton. They have a consultant that just takes a look at a community to determine its readiness for recruiting uh, retail. And uh, so they, they do, they analyze your website, um, LIBC's website, any information that's available, phone calls, you know, videos, anything that's out there, and then give, give you kind of a hit list of uh, what needs to change. So um, we have that. We have the hit list on there? I've got, I've got uh, uh, in my own notes, I think they would send a follow up, but there was some good input that those things that we definitely need to work on. Um, and then also we just talk about general approach and there's like there's with Littleton one of the things that uh, we struggle with in not just having economic problems just organically happen on the commercial district you know Lowe's, Home Depot, Walmart they've all realized DG Max you know they've all realized they have their own model that determined that Littleton um, isn't a community of 6,000 the community of 6,000 doesn't support that kind of activity and neither does a drive time of 20 minutes which may work in Nashua or uh, maybe five minutes in Boston, you know. But in an area like this, the drive time is really, you know, 45 minutes, even an hour. And so um, we had a discussion about what communities like us have to do to reach out to a, a, a commercial entity and make that case. And um, I've already started and I've had some success, so it's, you know, it takes, it's, it's like seeding. It takes a little while for them actually get some success. Um, let's see. We had a good meeting with some community members, uh, a breakfast meeting last week, just to kind of help them see some uh, status of different projects. Uh, <coughs> the career fair at Bretton Woods, and you know, there's maybe three or four students there who were interested in potential internship opportunities with the town. Um, and then they had it opened up to the public uh, later in the day. Not a lot of public were interested in working for the town. So. <laughs> Um, and then we had our planning and each, uh, charrette uh, planning meeting. We did a tour with uh, some members of the uh, River District Committee Select Board and toured the, the uh, Moreau parcel. And then we uh, went into a, a planning phase for the event. The event is going to take place. We, we have the Opera House book for September 13th and 14th. It'll be a two day event. Uh, right now they're working on building their team. Uh, and it's, the team will consist of architects, engineers, landscape to, um, architects, um, and uh, community planners. Uh, there may be traffic planners as well. Uh, I had a big <coughs> interview with a new frame group. We're working on all of our projects and project updates. Um, and then we had a Littleton small business startup training planning session that seems to be exciting and Carrie attended that. Maybe some of you have anything you wanted to add about it. Yeah, especially um, what, what's good about it, it focuses on like the mom and pop type businesses or people that would like to venture out, maybe explore if they've got an idea for a business to be able to take some training 
initially um, in that realm, but also for businesses may, that maybe need extra help in web design or marketing or uh, actually preparing a business plan, mm -hmm. even though a business may be already in place to uh, take a look at that. So some good ideas, two-year mm -hmm. um, scholarship, pro not scholarships, but grant program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No one of the instructors. <laughs> uh, so uh, we had a cultural arts, architecture, design, exploratory discussion. So this is a, a working with a uh, um, an architect who potentially is interested in providing some services for the town. I'm hoping to try to get them in for free. We'll see. If they want to uh, Excuse me, Andrew. Yeah. I just want to close the second public hearing. Um, which one was that? Uh, oh, the license agreement with public service. That's uh, now closed. Yeah. Um, let's see, E3 project. Okay, so I, I had a good discussion with the, um, with the organization or a company to just explore um, any potential for public private partnerships and built into some of the larger projects that are outstanding. I'll keep working on that, but I have any action why it was all bringing that. Um, I had a planning a discussion with the Nature Preservation Alliance. They, got, they decided to have their annual meeting in Littleton this year, and so I'm just trying to coordinate and help any way I can nice. with connecting businesses with them. When, how, how, how many people attend that? Uh, I think it's 150. All right, that's pretty significant. So one of the things that I've been trying to do is any kind of entity that we interact with to let them know that we have an opera house and that it seats 400 people and it's in downtown, which is in close proximity to everything that they, their conference goers are doing. So and we've had some good success. We've had the uh, State Parks Council meeting here now, and uh, this one, and I'm sure there's even more. DDS had theirs here recently. Right. So yeah, hopefully we'll keep getting recognized. That's great. Thanks. Is that a one day event? Uh, at least two days. We're going to talk over it. Uh, I'm sort of working with uh, Bayers. And I also try to plug in, you know, Bayers, Hampton. Uh, if this ends open over here, and also the uh, uh, Eastgate. Yeah. Uh, we had our internship breakfast celebration at Profile. Uh, that was a very well attended event. And uh, I had two interns. Uh, there, Nick Meacham, who's actually running the camera today, <laughs> and uh, Joe DeBama, of course. Oh. Yeah, I bet I always get the best interns. I don't, I don't know why, but. <laughs> um, and we conducted what I hope is our final interview for uh, attorney prosecutor. We've offered a position, and we'll find out um, if they've officially accepted it or soon. Right. Um, I had a discussion with a um, individual who is interested in the Dalton landfill proposal and we just talked about some of the different groups in town that they may want to go talk to and uh, see if, if, if anyone wants to you know, work with them. And, uh, and rail trail, uh, trying to keep that ball rolling. So in, uh, in discussion with uh, Chris Gamash, uh, Laura Black, uh, Christine Frost, and, uh, and uh, an event that uh, somebody brought up that was here a long time ago was a bass tournament and so they have today announced that they are coming back oh, so we're going to have the New Hampshire Bass Network I think it's open tournament uh, and we did some planning today they've already booked their hotels and uh, put them in touch with the restaurants yeah, and that's great. What are the dates on that, Andrew? Do you know? Yeah, so that's going to be uh, July 7th at the Moore Reservoir. And uh, they're interested in collaborating with the local businesses. And so um, I, I'm trying to reach out to some of the local business locals and put both of them in contact so that if they want to do their service them out there or try to say, come over here and we're going to take care of you. So we'll see what's, what happens. But I know that I saw a lot of the army books with the hotel. I think they went back. So okay. Great. Yeah. Yeah. And they, you know, they expect, I think, uh, about 40 rooms to be booked. Mm -hmm. um, so 
And again, so we had our, oh yeah, we also had our river district meeting on, on uh, Thursday at five, so you know, anybody's interest, interested in that. And uh, the plan of day shred is gonna be set again September 13 and 14. And then I uh, guess just quick, quickly, I passed out the year to date uh, uh, budget financials. And we should be at, uh, I think we have 30, um, 33.65% and we're at 36.48% and really that has to do with some of the annual, the cycle. So mm -hmm. like, you know, we've already paid two quarters in some cases. Uh, winter storms were high, I think we'll be able to make that up over the year. Dispatch is built. Yeah. I, I, I got, there, there's just a couple of things that, that jumped out at me. I just have questions about uh, motor vehicle registrations are 20 grand behind last year, and sewer users are 20 grand behind last year. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not thinking in terms of what the percentage is in the budget. I'm just, it just surprised me that we're behind on both of those things. I would say that this is, and Karen can speak this better than me, but this is likely uh, behind or behind in entries. quarter but the percentage doesn't really seem very high after four months uh, so I'm to me that's good news <laughs> uh, yeah if you look at it here today it's actually only really twelve thousand dollars or no nine thousand yeah so it's yeah. somewhere close to ten thousand bucks or more than last year and that's not too bad and as a percentage of the year it's not bad either so and the other uh, couple of the things that jumped out at me, um, animal control, we have a budget for it. We didn't do anything last year, at least up at this point. But do we have to have someone capture some beavers for us or something? Last year, I don't think we did. This year. Well, this year, but we haven't spent anything. So, well, there's, a, there's been some talk about that, about whether or not we should be capturing the beavers. So we're, we're looking into it. It's all private property. And uh, the, the uh, backed up water is actually also on private property. Uh, and it looks like it's something that we want to try to work with the landowner on, on both the beavers and uh, site improvements that okay. potentially be pushing property located. So I think right now we have three different areas where there's beavers. Um, I have some good drone footage that should probably be kind of entertaining for me to have it, have it ready to show you guys. Um, um, the water coming out of the Dells Brook, the lot next to the Dells Brook, which the town owns, is really an overflow uh, for the Dells and it's designed that way. I checked with the engineer to find out if that was an issue. So it was, it, it's really considered like energy storage or water storage. And then it flows underneath the uh, access road to Shaw's and Walmart. After it gets through there, there's a there's a good pathway for it to get out. But then it starts hitting beaver. There's beaver dam there. And McDonald's. Yeah. Um, there's one on well, the other side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there's one um, further down towards uh, um, Lowe's Home Depot, PS and equipment. Even. So it's going to be like Looney Tunes. We're down there. <laughs> the next day they build the dam back up. <laughs> What's going on, man? Well, so we we had a deal with them in the past, and what happens is um, there's we, we have an official person designated to uh, yeah. take care of somebody's license. It's uh, Chris Hodge, yeah. and so usually what I'll do is work with him, and he'll he takes care of the whole situation. Mm -hmm. uh, and, then okay. <laughs> uh, and then there's also an issue with a what it looks like it might be an undersized culvert that's privately owned by the. The Walmart or Shaw's access, so it might be too low on their size. We yeah. work with them to see if that can be changed. Okay, and the only other number that, uh, that jumped out on me, I see that the uh, um, upper house is quite a bit ahead of last year. Is that that's not timing? Is that getting, is that increased use pay? We're starting to see 
So we were starting to see it last year. Has that continued to grow, the use of that? It has. And uh, I mean, I can have Sue come and give you an appointment uh, conversation about it sometime, but it is, in fact, um, she said one of the main problems she's having this year is a lot of organizations have been used to calling and booking something like a month ahead, yeah. and it's already booked. So she's recommended many people call six months ahead if they can. Good. So, yeah, good on that. Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah, good. she's doing a really good job, and she has a, an assistant to help her now because it is so busy. And it's also good to have somebody trained if you know she wants to take some time off or. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I would be remiss to not point out, since Brian is sitting here, that recycling center is quite a bit ahead of last year's revenue at this point too. Yeah, you know, that's that's good. That's good news. All right, I don't have any other questions on that. Anybody else? Have? school, if that's something that they're looking at, we got the email today regarding, uh, from, from Dick Belanger. I didn't know if it's worth discussing, you know, the future of that property or wait to see if the school comes back or should we set, set up a committee to kind of review all the options made up of the school personnel, parks, community members? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it, it's it's certainly worth discussing. I think we need a lot, for me to discuss it much, I need a lot more information because I just don't have enough myself. Um, I'm a little reluctant to really get behind creating a committee because at this point I'm afraid we're gonna step on other people's, there's so many people now who are from different directions looking at this, I'm concerned Maybe that's the thing to do. Maybe we do need a committee to kind of bring it all together. Or maybe we don't want to step on, I don't know, step on something that's going on. Have you had any discussions with specifically with Dan Eaton property? Um, I have talked to the school. Um, I have talked to Dick Bolanger um, and uh, a private uh, capital company just to see what they thought of the place. There's a, you know, there's a lot of different um, discussions going on. It would be a good place for a town planner. Yeah. Really take it and run with it, but, um, I don't know. I just I think know. right now it may be premature to have a committee. We we have gathered a, a, a bit of information, historical information about it. Um, I haven't had a chance to go through and look at it. Um, you know, I guess maybe think about what if you if you create one, what the charge is and how you will kind of yeah. the mission and, and uh, define a, maybe a time. Do you have thoughts on that already, or do you want us to chew on it and come back with an idea? Well, I don't know. I mean, my thoughts, you know, when we brought it up originally was, you know, here's a piece of property that's been off the tax rolls for 20 years. We said it was going to be here. Probably the one. We said it was going to be, um, you know, for the parks, or, and that apparently went nowhere. The school looked at it, what, 10 years ago, didn't like it, and that went nowhere. So it's just, to me, it's just kind of sitting there. You know, and now it seems that there may be renewed interest in the school's behalf, but we don't know if there is, you know, there's probably some commercial value to it. I'm not sure if I haven't walked it. I'm not a geologist, but um, to me, it just almost seems like we should figure out what to do with it. I think after that discussion period was, what, in 2010, it reverted back to the town right. because the school um, didn't do anything with it. So you're, you're having discussions with the, that P3 company to look at that further? Maybe we should see what, is there, what's the timing on that? Uh, I'm not sure. I'll have to, I have to check and see. So Friday was my last talk. Uh, uh, the one thing I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm getting some, some drone footage up there. Yeah. So I'll be able to send it in so you can kind of take, assess you know, what it looks like. I'm also getting some up to the acres. So what I had asked that in the last meeting there were a couple of meetings ago was to reach out and see if there was some sort of value there that the, that the, the town can capitalize on as part of the plan. But this is part of that research, and I guess I'd like to see more of that sure. before, we, okay. before we go too much further mm -hmm. with that. Yeah. And they do plan on coming to a site visit and give some kind of a thought on it. Uh, and they were also interested in exploring the old Lakeway building and other projects too. So. 
Joe and Paul. Right, it all up into something like that. Yeah. And maybe a little package. Yeah. I think it's worth finding that, yeah. getting that information. I just, you know, committees, they, they have a lot of people volunteering on a lot of committees here, and they're doing a great job. We keep going to run out of people sooner or later. We keep creating, creating a committee for everything. Um, but, you know, I'm open to it. I just, I just think it's a little premature. Any other gold business? Um, new business, um, I'm not really sure what qualifies our new business, but I do have uh, uh, a proclamation I'd like to enter into the record. Uh, like I said, this is as good a part point as any to, to do that. Um, yeah. without, if I don't have any objection from the board, we've got to uh, uh, So this is a proclamation, Municipal Clerks Week, May 5th through the 11th of 2019. Whereas the Office of the Municipal Clerk, a time-honored and vital part of local government, exists throughout the world, and whereas the Office of Municipal Clerk is the oldest among public servants, and whereas the Office of Municipal Clerk provides the professional link between the citizens, the local governing bodies, and agencies of government at all level, <coughs> at other levels, and whereas municipal clerks have pledged to be ever mindful of their neutrality and impartiality, rendering equal service to all. Whereas the municipal clerk serves as the information center on functions of local government and community. And whereas municipal clerks continually serve to improve the administration of the affairs of the municipal of the office of municipal clerk through participation in education programs, seminars, workshops, and the annual meetings of their state, county, and professional organizations. Whereas it is, it is most appropriate that we recognize the accomplishments of the office of the municipal clerk. Now, therefore, we, the Board of Selectmen of Littleton, recognize the week of May 5th through May 11th, 2019, as Municipal Clerks Week, and further extend appreciation to our Municipal Clerk, Judith F. White, and to all Municipal Clerks for their vital services, for the vital services they perform, and their exemplary dedication to the communities they represent. Dated this sixth day of May, 2019, by the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Littleton. When we get a formal one, we'll, we'll execute it. <laughs> Any other new business? Oh, yeah. Well, where is that? Okay, so there's no other new business? Okay. Public comment? Really? Yeah, I, got, um, you know, I just want to ask the chairman. Oh. Uh, just to find out, you know, that uh, on a pilot agreement, you know, you guys, nobody was invited, you know, to express the concern about the pilot agreement. No one of you. The people that they were present, it was Skyler, Dosset, Considine, Sanser, and Annecy. I, you know, with the you citizen a little time worry why because you guys got a vote you know got to sign the agreement why no one of you you know was invited to be at this particular meeting and express yourself you know for the good of the citizen right now the way it looks like you know it's uh, I don't know if I should use the word scam. To me, it's a scam. To me. But I have a lot of people who probably appreciate what, what these people, they did, you know, and not particular me. Now, as a part, everybody knows, you three guys should, you know, gonna sign the agreement, which is not signed yet, you know, but as soon as it's signed, probably we can go forward. But, we don't understand why, you know, any new people was not invited at this particular meeting. And like I said, maybe, maybe, maybe you want me to repeat, Skyler, Dorset, Considine, Sarsus, and Anacin. 
I know there's people, you know, they can make up their mind, you know, and then they let you three guys, you know, sign it. And the grooming that I they enjoy, if it doesn't go the way it's supposed to go, you know, the taxation, the tax people, they're gonna pay the consequences. And I'll repeat, to me, this was a scam, and I'm gonna write something about it. It will be a scam eventually, you know, after you guys sign the agreement. You know, why they don't invite any of you guys? Yeah, um, for, when was that meeting? What, what meet, so you're talking about a specific meeting? Yeah, the meeting when, you know, when was the that? agreement. So don't, don't say, don't say that it made sure that everything goes. When was yeah. the meeting? Oh, so the, the, the discussion, there were multiple meetings over yeah. probably a period, I'd say, of like maybe nine to right. ten months. Right. And so it involved um, many face-to-face -face discussions. Yeah. And then, right. right, so uh, the reason I asked when the meeting, because it all started prior to, to this board, um, and Skyler was the board representative at that meeting. Yes. Um, so uh, we had the town manager, we had the uh, the committee, the uh, board game committee, and we had uh, Skyler as representative of the board of selectmen to negotiate this deal. Um, the board of selectmen was not negotiating the deal. Our, our job is to, once the deal is negotiated, to decide whether we feel it is in the best interest of the town. Now, uh, you know, we, we, there's no way that you're going to get, at least not today in Littleton, that the board of selectmen are going to be involved in every negotiation of every deal. It's just not, that's not the way it works. So this is something very big. Yeah, it was very big, and that's why it was, that's, right. that's why there were two uh, hearings on it, two public hearings. To public hearings, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and we took further testimony at a, at a selectmen's meeting on on that uh, on that issue um, because it was very important. There's no question about it. It was very important. But I, I you know I respect the fact that you think it's a scam. I firmly believe that it's a, that that deal is in the best interest of the town, or I wouldn't be in favor of it. Um, so you know, that, I don't know if that answers your question, but that's the that's no, the uh, just a, you know the, the curiosity is that uh, now you guys are left to sign this agreement, which is or not big. we didn't have to we didn't have to decide. I know, but but according to the meeting, the yeah. previous meeting, you know, it's just like the three, three guys, you know, is going to sign the the agreement, but this would have been good if it. Skyler, he would invite, you know, he would invite the other two select men, at least to hear about, because he knew that eventually he would have left, you know, the town, and, and the other two select men, they would have. You know, I, I understand, but they, don't, don't think for one second that we would, if we wanted to be involved in that meeting, that they wouldn't let us. We could have been. But that's not how it worked. There was a there was a group that was negotiating the deal, and then again, it's our job to decide whether we think the deal they negotiated was good, and that's that's the way it played out. Okay, and Mr. Chairman, I think that the community itself realized what an important um, aspect of the community's tax rate, the Moore Dam, is from its inception, and really the, the community or the board created the Moore Dam committee specifically for that purpose to have a, a group a public body that would uh, review and vet and bring the board um, with its best recommendation for path forward, not just now, but in every uh, cycle that there has been in the past. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay. yeah. Mr. Chairman, just to answer those uh, question, man, more than it was represented by individual, by one individual. That's Ed Anderson, okay? Ed Anderson, he's got no business, you know, about what's going on in town and stuff like that. He was not the completed, you know, the, the, the completed, you know, uh, uh, committee. He was just one individual. It's a, I mean, you know, he brings up this particular discussion, man, I think, but I, you know, I do with you 100% that, you know, eventually you guys do the good of the time, which 
a lot of people don't really think so, but they will spend some of it. That's the first thing I'd say about reading it. Thank you. Any other public input? Yes, I'm here to talk about a bad deal. Yeah, just briefly, I just wanted to introduce myself. I'm John Swan. I'm with the. Uh, okay, great. Thank you. Save me some copies. Um, obviously, uh, you've heard about the Dalton landfill being proposed, and last week the, board, the planning board um, voted to deem it a development of regional impact. Um, so I, it's not only going to obviously impact Dalton and Forest Lake, Forest Lake State Park, but Littleton, Whitefield, Sugar Hill, truck traffic, noise, pollution. So I guess my, my point of being here is just I'm hoping that the town of Littleton will get out ahead of this. I know Cassell is already lobbying um, down in Concord. Um, it was very sneaky how they presented their plan to the planning board to, in essence, create a 50-foot buffer, giving JW Chipping, in essence, um, ownership of the borders, thus cutting out the abutters, including the, uh, the state park. So um, with the DRI being issued, um, and it'll obviously go through the North, North Country Council, Littleton will become an abutter. I know this is probably more of a planning board issue right now, but again, I just implore the board of the town of Littleton to, to really take this seriously. I think it's a bad deal for the North Country to suddenly, in five, ten years, have two landfills. I mean, imagine what that's going to do to the water quality, Forest Lake. I mean, and I'm. I'm with Save Forest Lake, our website is saveforestlake.com, but there are other groups that I've been talking to and networking, owners of property there, who, because of their situations, whatnot, they can't get out and talk to politicians, whatnot, uh, other environmental groups. But again, I know, I think Dalton, ultimately, because they don't have zoning, um, just attending the planning board meetings I have, I have a feeling that they're really just going to be kind of out of their elements, so to speak, and I hate to see a, a giant company like Casella come in and really take advantage of another small town that they can just basically come in and bully and have their way. And Forest Lake's just a gem. If you, I don't know if you've been there, swim there. I mean, once you get leachate coming out of the landfill, I don't think anyone's going to want to swim in it. I mean, it's right there. Uh, the wetlands are around it. We're again hoping DES won't permit it, but obviously part of DES's agenda is to find landfills mm -hmm. in New Hampshire. So it's just, I'm not opposed to landfills. I know they're a necessary evil. Um, I just think that this is a terrible location. So I would just implore the town of Littleton to really get ahead of this and, and look at it seriously because Casella is definitely going to try and, and make way with this. and. Uh, because it's in their interest. They need, since Bethlehem's closing their doors to them, they have to go somewhere. So it's just what's going to happen to tourism, et cetera, here in the North Country. And I mean, I retired here because I just, I love this place. And, and Littleton's a great town. And I just think it will be impacted as well, the truck traffic, et cetera. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your input. Thank you for your concern. Um, I think it's important to, at this point because it's early in the process, and I've heard what he's saying. I'm, I'm certainly, oh, but that's the extent of my knowledge. I think uh, I think it would be a good idea for uh, instruct uh, Andrew to be sure you're staying connected to this. And on top of it, I have, um, does it have to go, go through the planning board first already? Is that already being required? Now that it's a, um, no, it's a regional. regional impact, you know, that's pretty new and I need to look into that. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think it's important. To, you know, I'm certainly not in a position to take a position right now, but I, but I think you stay on top of it and make sure you report to the board, um, the appropriate board and the board of select, um, you know, what you find and what's going on. So we can, uh, when appropriate, discuss it. That's really bad. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman.
one minute, just one minute, yep. well, less than one minute. I just to receive an email, okay, you know, it said that uh, you gentlemen, uh, right now I gotta call you gentlemen because, you know, you, you got to deal with, with the Senator Shaheen, okay, this is where it is. As you people know, Senator Shaheen, right, vote, actually, Senator Shaheen, when he came over here in a little time, I don't know, you guys have really, you know, embraced her so much, you know, it was in the front of the page of the paper, you know, you guys have did the kind of, oh, welcome and stuff like that. I don't know if you guys know, Senator, Senator Shaheen made it clear to America that he doesn't believe a newborn should have the opportunity to live the American dream. She bought it just to let it die. That's an email that I received this morning. Okay. I, I, you know, this is just a, you know, how I, I, I do you care embrace somebody that, uh, you know, he wants to kill all the babies and stuff like that? It's, it's, well, it's not me, I know that's right. I understand, and I don't know where that came from, and I don't know what that, what that is. And, but I want, first of all, I want to say your character, characterization of we all embraced her. I wasn't there. I don't know. I don't know what the hell happened. So whatever, whoever embraced her, embraced her. I don't know. Okay. But that, just because you receive an email that states that she says something doesn't mean that's so. I'm not going to comment on an email you received. Oh, okay. I'm mean, just, you know, it's a real. When you see somebody that doesn't do any good for us, for, uh, for the citizen, you know, it's kind of uh, I understand. Give out the way to go. I'm not Thank you. Anything else? Thanks. I guess we're done. Thank you. Thank you.